Hello, this is Tommy Tan. I am currently the director of computational biology at Immunitas, a biotech startup focusing on antibody-based immunotherapy. We analyze single-cell RNA, single-cell TCR, and spatial transcriptomics data for target identification and validation. We leverage a lot of the public available single-cell data. However, many of the data are not easily findable and reusable. The real data are often messy and require substantial time to curate and clean manually. It is known that scientists spend 80% of their time in data wrangling and only 20% of their time in insight generation. Messy data greatly increase the data analysis turnaround time and impairs fast iteration of hypothesis generation. Poly is an AI-empowered platform with harmonized public data using a mix of large language model and manual expert curation, developed by the Elucidata team. Elucidata's cloud platform delivers harmonized biomedical data to accelerate key research milestones. Poly makes preclinical data actionable and usable. Its powerful harmonization engine processes measurements and metadata and transfers them into a unified data model. Poly helps R&D team in scaling their data science and making heterogeneous biological data AI ready. The platform has been utilized uh, by multiple biopharma partners to harmonize millions of data sets across a variety of enterprise grade drug discovery initiatives. It makes data findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. In other words, it makes data fair. It also helps manage large amounts of data on a secure cloud. Today, I'm going to demonstrate how you can use Poly to do a meta-analysis uh, on a public available single-cell RNA sequencing data sets. So as I, I said, the Poly platform uh, uh, really is very powerful because it uses a mixture of uh, large language model and the human expert curation to harmonize both the public data and the in-house data. So uh, really this data is uh, ready for you to do uh, downstream analysis. <laughs> okay. Uh, so to do this, we first uh, just install some of the uh, required packages I already installed, and then uh, import those libraries. Okay. Some of them are poly library and some of them are commonly used uh, Python packages, including SCANPY, Harmony, uh, uh, Sibon for uh, plotting, okay? And it's very important for you to first actually authenticate yourself. So uh, you can, once you uh, authenticate yourself, then you can access the uh, Omics Atlas that I just showed you uh, in uh, a couple of minutes ago, okay? And as I said, all the data sets that are harmonized that you can filter from the uh, uh, graphical user interface, you can actually access them uh, using uh, Python here. And you see uh, those are the uh, metadata uh, columns or fields that are curated by the poly team here uh, at the data set level and also at the sample level. Okay. Okay. So first, let's uh, query the data set. So for today's purpose, we're going to use the... Uh, uh, non-small cell lung cancer uh, atlas. Okay, so you will just prepare this like SQL-like uh, query, and then you can query the metadata, and it returns, for example, uh, three data sets like, uh, from the database. Uh, so for today's uh, video, we're going to just uh, use those two uh, data sets. Okay, and the first thing you need to do, you use this uh, download data sets function from uh, this Omics Atlas uh, library, and then uh, you specify the Atlas and also those two data sets that you want to download. Okay, you send just two those two. And once you download, and uh, you can uh, use SCANPY, uh, it's a popular tool in Python for analyzing single cell RNA sequencing data, and read into the H585. Okay, and those uh, H585 file they are already uh, uh, uniformly processed by the Poly team, so. Uh, they already did some uh, quality control, filtering, and normalization, and then uh, re uh, dimension reduction, building the k neighbor graph and clustering and annotated cell type, use SC type. And then in the end, this is what you uh, uh, 
uh, download this process H5AD file. And you can uh, access uh, what are those uh, param uh, processed uh, parameters using this function. And it will tell you, okay, what exactly uh, the parameters are used to generate this H5AD file. Okay, so you do the same thing for those two data sets. Okay, so and the, one of the uh, particular column we're interested in is the curated sampling site, whether it's a primary site or adjacent normal. And this is the same uh, command, but for uh, the, the other data sets. And because all those columns are uh, harmonized in the same manner, so they, they, are, they are the same meaning, and also they have the same values. So this primary sites uh, is the same as here, the primary sites. Okay. Now we can do some uh, just uh, easy quality control uh, plots uh, using SCANPY uh, for each data set separately, looking at the percentage of mitochondrial D uh, RNA and total, num uh, total number of genes that are detected and total number of counts. And those are just two different uh, data sets shown here. Okay? And you can also plot the yield map and for each data, each data set separately and uh, color them by the cell type. And you see the different uh, cell types uh, in different data set that uh, uh, that are annotated by the SC type uh, for each uh, data set individually. Okay, the idea is to be able to uh, consolidate different data sets uh, together, and and we can do uh, compare the uh, cancer versus adjacent normal using uh, pseudobulk. Okay. So the next step is to use, uh, concatenate those two data sets together and use this uh, algorithm called Harmony to uh, remove the batch uh, effect. And uh, Harmony is a very uh, well-known uh, algorithm for batch correction. As you can see here, different data sets uh, of the uh, similar cell types and because initially without any batch correction, um, the, if you class them, they will, uh, on the yield map, they will be actually classed by sample or data sets. So in this case, you're trying to actually artificially squish different, uh, same cell types from different cell, uh, from different samples, uh, squish them together. So uh, remember any batch correction methods um, may actually raise some of the biological differences. Just be careful when you use them. Okay. So, so in this case, we just uh, concatenate those two end data and use uh, inner join because sometimes different data sets they may use different uh, gene, sim gene IDs and they don't necessarily have the same uh, gene ID so you have to do an inner join and after you join them and you use harmony to integrate them and remove the batch effect and calculate the, <coughs> the uh, nearest neighbors but in this case we're not using the uh, principal, uh, PCA principal component uh, rather using the har harmony uh, coordinates so how many will not actually change the underlying value of the counts? It only changed the uh, uh, the PC coordinates. To so that's why we specify the PC how many here, okay? And then we can uh, uh, look at the uh, and plot that U map as well, okay? Okay. Then for after we harmonize them, uh, put them together, and we want to predict uh, cell types because sometimes um, different data sets they uh, the cell type uh, label will, can be a little bit different, so especially when you actually um, integrate them together. So in this case, we'll just use SC type, and the SC type will use marker genes. We already downloaded some of the cell type marker genes in the current folder, and we'll use the cell type to uh, just uh, annotate them by markers. Okay, and essentially this is. Uh, what you see in the end after you <coughs> this uh, after you merge all the two data sets harmon harmony corrected and then this is the cell annotation okay, you see different cell types here b cells uh, fibroblast monocytes and different uh, t cells nk cells here dendritic cells uh, and mass cells even. okay so once you have the merged data sets so one of the simple things you can do you can calculate the percentage of uh, cell types uh, in each sample. So if I uh, use this uh, cross-tab function here, so essentially you get, so this you can make a heat map like this. So each row will be one sample here, 
either it's uh, adjacent normal or primary sites tumor. And each column here will be the uh, cell types. And the number here is just the percentage of that cell type in that sample. Okay. And now uh, uh, let's uh, start to do a pseudobulk analysis. So to do differential gene expression uh, for single cell RNA signaling data, it has been shown that pseudobulk is quite effective. So pseudobulk essentially you are collapsing all the cells from the same cell type for uh, the, from the same uh, sample together. And then you, after you get that count matrix, you can use the seq 2 or edge to do differential gene expression just like what you usually do uh, for bulk RNA sequencing data. But in this case, you're doing uh, seq 2 for uh, each cell type, and that's really the pow power of a single cell RNA sequencing data sets. Okay, so <clears throat> the pseudo bulk sample, co uh, the columns will be uh, the sample ID and the cell type, and also the curate the sampling site, will, which will be like whether it's a pi primary site or the adjacent uh, normal sites. Okay, okay, so now. Uh, since, okay, now we can actually start to create pseudo bulk. So uh, this code here is just a for loop here. So for each uh, um, uh, pseudo uh, samples here, so essentially each sample and also each cell type, you make a pseudo bulk. And then in the end, you, you uh, create this uh, pseudo bulk end data. Okay, objects. So once you create uh, this end data, now you can use DSIG2 to do differential gene expression. Uh, this uh, this Py DSIG2 that was recently developed, so you can integrate uh, DSIG2 in the Python framework rather than use DSIG2 in, uh, in R. So you can just uh, import uh, the functions that you need. And the same thing, now you need to create a count table because uh, DSIG2 works on the raw counts and and then you can uh, create the contrast that you want to compare it's essentially just uh, concatenate the cell type and also the sampling uh, sites whether it's primary or adjacent or normal now it will be uh, just routine DSIG2 workflow so you create the DSIG2 objects and then run DSIG2 uh, for normalization and then you can uh, calculate differentially expressed uh, genes. So in this case, we're comparing fibroblast uh, primary sites versus uh, just normal. Okay, and if you look at the summary, and those, uh, and for this is the uh, differentially expressed gene list, and we can sort that table just by the uh, p-adjustment uh, value. So, and then you see those are the top genes that are differentially expressed between. Uh, normal, uh, just a normal and the primary sites here, okay? So in this case, we can visualize the, the data here. So for this gene SLC16A3 here, uh, we can just sub, um, uh, subset only the fibroblast for that N, uh, for that uh, DSIG2 object, and then you can plot the violin plot for this gene, uh, comparing those two different conditions. And you do see actually uh, the primary site is much uh, higher than the adjacent uh, normal. So uh, even better if you uh, you want to actually make a, a, a violin plot by samples. For example, you can uh, <coughs> if you have multiple samples, you have multiple samples in for normal, then you can plot multiple normal uh, uh, violin violin plots here, and also multiple uh, violin plots for the primary sites. And in that case, you will see whether it, it could be driven by a a single uh, sample or not, but in this case, because we use a pseudo bulk, uh, um, it's actually unlikely to be driven by a single sample. And indeed, if you uh, search the literature, you see this paper and uh, showing that uh, this gene SLC16A3 is associated with poor uh, prognosis in, uh, non uh, in uh, lung adenocarcinoma. Okay, uh, so that's it t uh, for today. I hope. Uh, in this video, you can see how powerful the Poly platform is, and you can easily access all this data uh, using uh, several lines of commands. And what's even better is all those uh, cell, uh, data sets, they are harmonized in the same way. So all those metadata columns, they are consistent across different data sets. So you can easily uh, just put them together, 
uh, select relevant data sets, put them together and do, and do analysis. And, and really, uh, I think uh, the Poly platform can save you a lot of time and resource. So I hope uh, this video is helpful and see you next time.